USA Ultimate is proud to present the 2016 USA Ultimate College National Championships. We're set for the second women's semifinal between two of the premier programs in the sport. The third seed, Stanford Superfly, and the number one seed and defending champion, Oregon Fugue. This looks like a matchup befitting of a title game, and these two teams met for the title a season ago, but a consequence of the upsets had the five-seed Whitman over the 13 Virginia. The Sweets await the winner of these two powerhouse programs. Hi again, everybody. Evan Lepler with Ian Toner, and this is a matchup everybody's really looking forward to. Oregon, the defending champs, but over the course of the weekend, no one's been better than Superfly. Stanford, the only team across both divisions to win every single game, win their pool. They are on fire heading into this bracket. Well, in, in the Stanford program, led by Robin Davis, obviously they've won championships, although it's been a while in Stanford terms. All weekend long, they have been steady. They trailed at the half against Washington. That was the only time they faced some adversity, and they conquered it. And Monisha White, the heart and soul of the Stanford team. Monisha White's been here. She was in the championship game last year. A very experienced handler. Ultimate runs in their family. Her brother, Nathan White, is on the USA men's national team. Look for her to be making a lot of throws and leading her team on the field. Stanford has a ton of good players, but of course, Oregon does too. And the story of of the five-year seniors, Jesse Schaffner, Bethany Kaler, Alex Ode. Not only are they in their fifth straight semifinal, but they're trying to stay perfect. They've been to the championship game every year they've been in college. An interesting setting for them. With that level of experience, you'd expect them to be very comfortable in this game. Jesse Schaffner, one of the most intense players and passionate and committed leaders across the entire women's division, the college game as a whole. Look for her to be making plays on both sides of the disc. She plays with incredible fire. A year ago, she was injured in the semifinal, came back, showed incredible grit and toughness. Schaffner in Oregon, White and Stanford, Fugue and Superfly for a berth in the championship. Championship game here at Nationals coming up. The 2016 USA Ultimate College Championships are presented by Discraft Ultrastar, the official disc of USA Ultimate. Discraft Ultrastar, now available at over 1,900 U.S. retail locations, including all Dick Sporting Goods and Hibbit stores. By Five Ultimate, apparel made specifically for Ultimate players by Ultimate players. Visit FiveUltimate.com for everything from Discraft Ultra Stars to jerseys, shorts, and custom team uniforms. And by USA Ultimate, the national governing body for the sport of Ultimate in the United States. For more information or to find out where to play in your area, visit USAUltimate.org. Stanford Superfly with Veronica Cruz, Courtney Gig, Shayla Harris as the cutters, and Monisha White and Rempel, uh, Annie Rempel rather, Michelle McGee and Caitlin Go, the handlers for Robin Davis, who's been coaching Stanford for 15 years now. She was a sophomore rookie when the Superfly program won a national title back in 1999. And well, the big change for Oregon this year, Lou Burris not on the sidelines. Katie Weatherhead and Claire Sharman are in charge, and they've got a veteran team to work with. Haley Walrus, the, the sophomore handler, is so explosive. And Olivia Bartriff, of course, in the title game last year, she was the biggest star in a team of great players with Schaffner, Odie, Angstad, Lido, and Lillian Weaver as well, along with, of course, Jesse Schaffner, who has been on a mission throughout her college career, plays with such purpose. And, you know, when Oregon lost to Virginia in pool play, it tested the fortitude of this team. And from pre-quarters to quarters, and now in the semis, Oregon back where they belong in the Final Four. It's been nothing but convincing victories ever since that loss. Uh, Oregon has, as you said, been on a mission. Uh, a UCLA team that could have provided a stronger test in the quarterfinals. This Fugue roster made light work of that challenge. And it was a good game in the first half. UCLA took a short lead, but then the Oregon Fugue team pounced. And they can strike fast on a 3-0 or four -oh run. They led 8-4 at half en route to their quarterfinal victory. Seven on seven, first of 15 wins. Eight goals is halftime. And of course, the disc can be thrown in any direction. Each player must set a pivot foot when they catch the disc. 
And a 10 second stall count prevents an individual from holding on to it too long. Well, incredibly, the sun has come out here in Raleigh. The forecast was for washout conditions all day long. We were wary of lightning, and yet that's not a factor for the moment. Hopefully, I didn't just jinx us. And Stanford on offense in the white to get us started. Monisha White throws it back. Annie Rempel. And of course, the Stanford team has been in plenty of big games. Upfield and a nice grab on the sidelines from Courtney Gag to the end zone, just out of the reach of the laying out target, Veronica Cruz. Get another look here. Cruz bidding with that inside shoulder rather than going at it with the left hand. Still not sure if she would have been able to get there, but. Not the normal technique when attacking that disc. Bethany Kaler, number 11 in green, lets it rip. Rempel's there on D. And that's a mismatch with Oregon's Madison Lostra, five foot seven, Rempel, five nine, and she plays big. Both these teams are incredibly talented and versatile in what they can do. They can play big, they can play small. Oregon, of course, well known for its confusing zone defense. And Stanford as well, very capable of mixing it up defensively. And uh, possession goes back and forth on this opening point. This Ella Hansen, Monisha White matchup is pretty entertaining. Hansen stifling White's dump cuts on that last possession and White making sure Hansen couldn't get back to the disc after the turnover. Caitlin Go resets for Rempel. And that just sailed over the outstretched arms of Shayla Harris. Feels like this is more turnovers than we had in the first few points of the Virginia Whitman game. And that's a testament to just how clinical Whitman was and how closely they valued the disc to get off to that huge lead in the first half. They found an incredible rhythm, the Swedes did. Winning 15-9. And this is what, this is more the style of play that Oregon likes. They don't mind turning the disc over a bunch, taking a bunch of quick shots. I think Stanford, some of their coaching staff acknowledged before this game that one of their keys was going to be not falling into that trap and valuing the disc more frequently on the turnover and not giving the Fugue offense repeated chances to get back into the swing of things in a given possession. Another turnover as Kaler's throw knocked down by Go. Stanford across midfield. White swing. Incomplete intended for Gig. Kaler, another one of those fifth year seniors on this Fugue roster who's played in every final. Odie oh, sends it long, caught by Lostra. Odie to the end zone. And Morgan Caldwell gives Fugue the first score. That's a break to begin. Well, I think that point featured more turnovers than both teams would have liked. But ultimately, Oregon not afraid to air it out on the turnover. Making the most of that opportunity. And Ode just finding her receiver, beating her mark to the cone. Alex Odie has done a lot in her time in Eugene, representing Fugue. She grew up in Boise, Idaho. There's Madison Lostra, the 5'7 junior from Portland, 
Odie was just uh, officially announced as a new member of Seattle Riot 2016, one of the top women's club teams in the country. So Oregon begins with a break. And, you know, the seeds here are a little misleading because Stanford has looked better than Oregon from wire to wire since this tournament began. Exactly. I, I should clarify, Stanford is the, the only top seed in a pool to hold on to their pool title and not lose a game. Every other top pool seed across both divisions did not win their pool heading into bracket play. Well, in the women's division, three of the four pool winners advanced to the semifinals, Oregon being the lone exception coming from the pre-quarters to the semifinals. In the men's division, none of the top seeds won their pool and none of the pool winners won their quarterfinal game. All four semifinalists journeying from the pre-quarters. Big backhand shot hauled in by Natasha Field Marsham just shy of the goal line. And Gag is going to acknowledge that that disc did hit the turf oh my. before it came into her hand. Taylor picks up. Bar trip to Kaler. And Kaler's there's a huge flick. Alex Odie can't get there. And you mentioned she's a part of that. Sorry, as we get another look here at the throw to Gag, and I don't think that disc was up before it even got to her hand. She didn't even have an opportunity to doink it. Oregon with some stifling defense on the sideline. Stanford gets the swing. And all of a sudden, Courtney Giggs open to the end zone. Not sure how she was left all alone there, Evan. I'm, I'm wondering if her mark had kind of peeled off at a high stall count to place more pressure on the four side lane or attack that disc that went up to the break side. Nothing's gonna come much easier for Gag than that score there. Well, the key throw is getting it off the sideline, obviously, and then Rosemarie Sandino saw Gag out of the corner of her eye and found her. So an important hold there for Stanford to avoid back-to-back -back breaks at the outset out of an Oregon team that just fuels itself from another team's struggles. Yeah, they're very uh, free-flowing and creative with their offensive decisions. I think they'll be the first to tell you that they don't stick to the conventions of traditional offensive sets. If they've got a run and gun opportunity, if they're gonna need to throw while on the run or take an unorthodox deep shot, whatever helps keep them in flow, they'll take advantage of. So we're still getting very settled in here, obviously. But Oregon with its O-line out there for the first time. Led by Schaffner, who has created so many spectacular highlights during her time as a college ultimate player. And that time the throw just out of her reach. And Schaffner did not make a call. It is Stanford's disc, I think. The observers don't know Sorry, what's going contested on. Contested or uncontested? Uncon Uncontested, it will come to you here. Oh, there was a call. The foul, no contest. Uncontested. Shayla Harris. You're gonna be at the spot the so you'll be right with her. Is everyone in your set? Uncontested foul. Stone one. Shayla Harris was marking Schaffner, and I believe there's a little bit of body contact before Schaffner had a shot at the disc, and this deep shot is going to be too far for Walrus. White picking up on her own goal line with a chance to break. Rample needs a reset, gets it to White. And up the line for Gag. Certainly these three were so pivotal in Stanford's run to the finals last year. 
along with Stephanie Lim, Michaela Meister, the two biggest pieces that are not back for Superfly this year. Looking long for Gag on the sideline. Was she in? Nope. Schaffner through the contact. And this is where Schaffner's dangerous. She realized her defender missed the play and just took off. That forced Shayla Harris to peel off her assignment. That was a smart play by Harris. Yep. Because Rempel was out of the play and they left Walrus unmarked, but she didn't do the damage because everyone downfield was covered. Yep. One throw later, they have the disc back. An unforced turnover there for the Fugue offense, a simple swing that just wasn't on the mark. Lonisha White with an outside in throw to the inside out lane. We call that an Oyo. Gig cross field, got it. The score for Stanford's Anne Marie Gordon. The grad student. And that all started with this throw here from Monisha White and a slicing through the defense that, that Oyo to the inside out lane and Gag slicing through the defense in the red zone as well with that throw just out of the reach of Bartreff. Anne-Marie Gordon has been a very nice addition to the Stanford program this year. She was a, a track and field athlete at Duke where she was a pole vaulter, graduated from Duke, moved to the Dominican Republic where she learned ultimate for the first time in the Dominican and now is at Stanford for a two-year master's program, and Courtney Gig loves to have a target like that, an athlete in the end zone. Back on serve, 2-1 in the first half. Important for Stanford to get that break back right away, show that they have the discipline and the capability to march things all the way down the field, even if incrementally. Well, the Biggest key for Robin Davis coming into the game as Anne-Marie Gordon scored the goal was she said, we need to keep our heads. You know, Oregon can kind of lull you into a run and shoot, poor decision making kind of game because Oregon loves to take chances. They love throughout this run of being a premier program to take their shots and play defense. And they feel like over the long haul, they're athletes will allow them to prevail. Robin Davis told me we need to not buy into the crazy and if we do that we'll be okay. Exactly. Don't get stuck down in that turnover for turnover battle. Stay above that and value the disc and they could find themselves in a, an advantageous position. Kaler now 10 yards outside the end zone. And for the score it's Kaler to Odie. Those two have been playing together, it seems like forever. 2-2. Two, two. And Evan, you mentioned Odie showing up on the 2016 Seattle Riot roster. Another huge addition for them coming this season is gonna be Cassie Swafford, who led Ohio State with Paige Sober to a 2014 national championship, and Cassie actually won the Women's Callahan Award that season. Well, if not for Cassie Swafford and Paige Soper, Oregon might be looking for its fourth consecutive national championship right now. At times, Fugue seems like just an unstoppable force, and it was shocking to see them fall to Virginia, but was shocking was that it wasn't so surprising because Virginia just played so well I thought both teams played great. Watch the entire second half of that game on the far north fields here at the WRAL Soccer Park. And obviously from the pre-quarters, Oregon easily surpassed Belladonna and then took down UCLA Blue to get here. Yeah, I think that was a real, the victory that Virginia had over Oregon was a real system program team win. Good patience against the Oregon zone and Virginia's zone similarly frustrated the Oregon offense. Monisha White anchors the handling core for Stanford. 
Rempel wide open for Cruz in white, marked by Hansen. Caitlin Go. Annie Rempel. Rempel doing a good job communicating with her fakes, telling her receivers when to move on to their next cut. Keg. Did she leave enough float? No, it falls to the turf. A very smooth progression of offense until Gag had it at the goal line. You gotta wonder if Cruz could have pulled the trigger and laid out there. It, it looked at first glance like that might have been within her reach. But now that Superfly has to focus on getting the disc back. Nice inside flick. Taylor lets it fly. Looking for Caldwell. Oregon on the doorstep. Hansen marked by White. Nice the flick to the end zone. And it's Galvin for Oregon to give the Fugue a 3-2 lead. And interesting there, Caldwell and Galvin figuring significantly in that break. Not the superstar names of Kaler, Schaffner, Odie, Bartruff that you would expect to be making the plays. Well, this is an incredibly deep Oregon team. And the culture that they've cultivated has almost done recruiting by itself. I mean, in the Pacific Northwest, there have been several youth ultimate players who have dreamed of playing for Fug. And the program now led by three Oregon alums, Catherine Weatherhead, Claire Sharman, and Danielle Hirsch. It's been a change, though, without having Lou Burris on the sideline. You talked to Jesse, Jesse Schaffner about what that difference has been. Yeah, and uh, Jesse had some interesting things to say. She said, you know, given the ultimate IQ that resides within that entire program, when they're in any given game, everyone's got a bunch of ideas about what the team needs to do to adjust course, what change needs to be made, you know, maybe we need to switch our marks this way or we need to uh, take these kinds of throws instead of those. Um, it's great to have all of those ideas. Jesse said that with Lou, he could identify the one most impactful adjustment that the entire team could take note of and implement to really change their game plan and make a difference on the field. Lou Burris stepping away after coaching Fugue for quite a while. Said he wants to spend more time with his family. His father wants to be able to hang out more with him. And obviously, the commitment to lead one of these top programs is immense. Nice grab by Harris after she started out being isolated just apart from that side stack. Uncontested foul, Uncontested foul on the mark. That's Walrus on the mark there. I think accidentally knocking the disc out of the thrower's hands. We've noticed Monisha White and Hansen matching up quite a bit. Hansen is making life difficult for White when she wants to get the reset. Harris up the sideline. What a layout catch. Courtney Gegg. Courtney Gegg has become one of the premier downfield receivers in the women's division. But let's be honest, this score made possible by the incredible breakthrough from Shayla Harris, stepping out, getting low, not being afraid to challenge the mark, putting it in a spot where only her receiver could get there. Great finish by Gegg as well. Bethany Kaler was guarding Gegg, but it's hard to blame Kaler. It was a throw from Harris who was being forced to the middle of the field in a big pivot. Yeah, tough, tough when you're you're near the goal line and you're a defender. You've got so much horizontal responsibility. It's tough to challenge someone all the way to that break side cone because you don't want to get caught out of position or set up for a plant and cut back to that open side that's easier for the thrower to hit. Shayla Harris, a sophomore, and she had never played ultimate before. 
coming to Stanford. Very athletic 19-year-old. She'll have some responsibilities in the guarding Jesse Schaffner department. An unenviable task for a defender. But great experience for a sophomore. Nice job by Harris taking away Schaffner's first looks there. High stall situation. And a really solid downfield defense here from Stanford, and it forces a turnover. And you don't credit that D to any one player in particular, because all seven had something to do with it. That's a coverage sack to analogize to football. Hallie Dunham, another notable young player, freshman from the Northwest, picking up the disc there, but unfortunately that goes in and out of Shayla Harris's hands. Angstad Lido. That's a bailout shot to the end zone. Schaffner reading it well. And Schaffner almost had it, but she could not control. Freya Che was nearby for Stanford. Dunham picking up the disc again for Stanford. Beautiful IO shot to McGee. Big backhand. And knocked away by Oregon. That was Bartriff on the D. But there was a call. Uncontested. An uncontested throw, so this will go back to the thrower. Here you see the finishing end and Bartriff smacking it away. Yeah, I did think that throw hung much more than the than Rempel had planned. And let's take a look here. She winds up. Uh, and I guess the Oregon receiver touched her hand before she released the disc. That looked awfully close to me, but again, it was an uncontested foul, so. Did not look egregious from the replay, but yep. no contest. Hallie Dunham has had some wonderful breakthroughs so far here on the turn. Another lofted throw. And Harris is shot, caught by Che. To the end zone for Superfly's score. And Stanford had a couple of chances that possession. Finally reeling it in there. Great positioning on this deep shot. Bodying out Haley Walrus and Jesse Schaffner, who peeled off to help. And the point punctuated by Michelle McGee from Rosemary Sandino. Now, there are times, Ian, when Oregon will play one on one defense. There's other situations when they're just all flying around and all different directions, poaching, all going for the disc. Sometimes it's hard to recover. Stanford Superfly, as Ian mentioned before, the third seed coming in, they were perfect in pool play, and then just blasted Colorado Collie in the quarterfinals earlier today. Colorado Collie missing one of their top players, Johnson, who is also a member of the Molly Brown squad unfortunately suffered an MCL injury that kept her out of that game. Like turn around them and they'll just kind of like Timeout called like on the field. Yeah. And they will fall if you step out of the way and go a different direction. It is. Oregon Fugue, a program founded back in the mid 80s. We've had several prestigious players come through there. They first took home the crown in 2010, rising to the top. Won it again three years ago in Madison over Carlton. And then this last year, it was Oregon over Stanford in what was really a compelling championship game from start to finish. Steph Lim, Michaela Meister, along with White and Gag and Rempel really gave Oregon everything they had. And I think Stanford's experience in that situation was 
something that that crop may not, that crop, that class, the players that are still around and contributing may not have had heading into that game in comparison to some of the more experienced Oregon players who were used to playing in finals year after year. So I think that's kind of leveled the experience playing field coming into this matchup. We are on serve here in the first half of the second women's semifinal. Oregon leading Stanford in the championship game a year ago, but it's the super fly on top here. And Oregon turns it over. Schaffner looking for one of her favorite targets, Kaler, but that throw just a bit too far. White to Rempel. Oh, and a tremendous layout D from Oregon's Morgan Caldwell. He's been so huge here in the first half. A nice deep grab earlier, and that layout block to get the disc back for her offensive unit. And Oregon's off to the races on the turnover. Kaler with some give and go on the goal line. And nice Schaffner is there. Get another look here at Caldwell's block, reading the I.O. shot from Rempel. Full extension to prevent that from getting to go. First and then, score for Schaffner. And Kaler and Schaffner doing their best to get things off to the races. And with that in mind, Jesse Schaffner had an opportunity to speak with our team earlier this weekend about Oregon's playing style. I got to Oregon, they taught me how to play fast. Uh, it's what kind of what we preach is tempo, move the disc. So even if it's not pretty, <laughs> we like to just move the disc quickly and take control of the game and play our pace. Uh, it sets the tone so that we are ruling what happens on the field, um, even if it's messy. Some teams aren't like used to playing messy. and So there's lots of turnovers sometimes, mishaps sometimes, but when we're on, we are on. There's no question about that. Jesse Schaffner often has a smile on her face on the sidelines, on the field, usually a fierce competitor. Her older brother, Markham, won a Division Three national title. The Claremont Colleges in California. And Markham and Jesse talk often. Jesse called him her rock. And she'll be getting off the bus and have two minutes, and she'll call and say, hey, I have two minutes. What's going on? Markham actually flew in this morning for this game, and he's here in the stands. They chatted before the tournament began, and Jesse asked if he had any advice. His advice was, Ball out, stay healthy, and have a blast. It's your last chance at Nationals. Oregon and Odie. An incredible touch throw there from Kaler. Just lofting that flick with a slight inside out edge into the back corner. And Oregon breaks to take the lead once again. Taylor very involved on this point. Nice. Hanson with a low release flick there. Not many throwers in the women's division can make the throw that Kaler just made. That's, that's five years of creative throwing in Eugene, making that one work. Well, the trio, Kaler, Odie, and Schaffner have grown so close. When they were true freshmen, they started to run sprints with each other after practice. And there's a team ethos that no one runs alone, so they would always run together. And you know, some of the upperclassmen at that time were watching these freshmen run these sprints after practice. And they're just off by themselves. If you're a senior captain and your freshmen are out there running by themselves, what does that tell you? It's pretty inspiring. These kids are ready to take it to the next level. And it's interesting that we've got an example like that because 
there are some instances in College Ultimate where you're trying to introduce new players to the game, and as they're getting acclimated to their college environment, you're also competing against other clubs and activities and interests for their time. So you don't want to make it too hard at the outset. Exactly. You gotta you gotta show them the fun stuff, but clearly these two fugue players were ready to commit from the outset. That's the culture they have created, cultivated, fostered in Eugene. Gag shoots it to the end zone, and it's knocked away. Hansen having a great defensive game so far. Frustrating White in the handler set and getting that deep block there. Out of the reach of Odie. So Stanford, about 30 yards shy of the goal line with an opportunity. White swings to Rempel. And beyond. And almost Oregon still staying with a somewhat junky look. Up until a moment ago, they were all fronting every single Stanford receiver. Field Marsham resets. Rempel sees a lot of green traffic in front of her. Stanford to use a swing. White faked the hammer to the back corner there. Not quite ready to pull that trigger. And the super fly possession was stuck in the muck there on that sideline. White and Rempel not on the same page. I think Rempel was looking for a cheeky break opportunity. White had already started to move to get to the center of that cup. Neither side has led by multiple scores yet in this first half. Oregon has a chance to change that here. Gabby Ofter Heidi ahead for Alex Odie. And a pick call to slow things down. Just coming back to Ofter Heidi. Yeah, sure. So you said two? Two? Song two. Coming at two. So after Heidi has it on the restart and immediately turns it over. Stanford gag to McGee. That almost looked like a, an Oregon D-line offense possession there with the way Stanford rushed and went off to the races after that turnover. McGee, a huge key to the Stanford offense, whether it's at the start of the point or off a turnover. Always plays in the front of the stack and often makes the first cut. And Oregon's transition defense that time not up to par. Nice inside out shot from Rempel to Gag to get things going. And then an easy finish from Gag to McGee. Timeout on the field. Stanford takes their first timeout in the first half. So Superfly calls for a timeout, perhaps to refresh. Two timeouts per half, per side, here at USA Ultimate Nationals. And Stanford coming in as the three seed behind Courtney Gag. Robin Davis has been at the helm since 2002. She was a player before that. She Another started on the Stanford B team in 1998. So she wasn't on the 98 Stanford championship team. She was a sophomore rookie on that 99 team, which was the end of a three-peat for Superfly. Other famous names on that team. Dominique Fortinet, who's been a staple in the women's club scene was also a leader on those Stanford teams and looking to more recent Stanford teams, another new addition to their coaching staff, Steph Lim, mm -hmm. who you'll see there in the straw hat. She was playing in the national final just a year ago here with this Stanford team. Representing San Francisco Fury with the shorts. 
And a lot of great players have matriculated through Stanford. Said she's very excited to be able to share the experience that she's cultivated on Fury, on the All-Star Tour, a number of experiences since college to help each of the new members of Superfly own their mental and physical tool sets. Dominique Fontenet won the Callahan as a senior in 97. AJ Johnson won the same award in 98. Gwen Ambler was the Callahan runner up in 2003 when Stanford won the title. Five all here in the first half. Oregon is up a break. Good mark from Halas on Harris on Schaffner, excuse me. Haley Walrus was such a big addition a year ago for Oregon. And really was the quarterback of the offense ever since she got to Eugene. Schaffner turns on the burners, hauls it in inbounds. And hits Bartra in the end zone for the Fugue score. Just when you think something isn't going to work out, Jesse Schaffner finds a way to save the play. Kaler just kind of missing her on a simple in, in cut throw. Schaffner towing the line, and then Bartra burning her mark to that front cone. Three popular figures in the Oregon offense, and Jesse Schaffner doing everything she can to keep her team in this game. Great body control from Schaffner. And I'm not sure there's anyone with better hands than Bartra on Fugue's roster. She might be the fastest player on Fugue as well. You know, deceptive for her size, but she moves quite quickly. Schaffner grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. And really wanted to be a part of that Oregon program. Played Youth Ultimate in Nashville. And these conditions, Evan, are starting to become more and more reminiscent of what we saw earlier in the weekend. At, at first pull of Whitman, Virginia, we had some rain, fairly overcast conditions. And right now, the sun is out. You got a light breeze. It's a lot hotter. Fewer elements working against the execution on field and more testing their endurance. Is the heat going to play a factor and tire players out quicker than normal? Up the sideline, here comes Superfly. Oh, a tremendous poach D there from the handler set. It was Caldwell who snuck in. Taylor to Hanson. Hanson pumping a few shots. Takes the reset to Walrus. Hanson waiting for something to develop downfield, breaks the mark. Kaler, Caldwell, Oregon leads by two. Morgan Caldwell really having a, the half of the tournament for herself here. A couple of deep grabs, this one for a break goal. She also had the block earlier. A couple other blocks this half. Really making a name for herself and becoming a, a prominent figure of the supporting cast for Fuke. Sophomore from Bend, Oregon. She's a psychology major at U of O. And a nice toss from Kaler, who you may remember two years ago lost her national championship experience to an injury in Cincinnati, which happens to be her hometown. She was 
sideline with a broken foot, although that might be a middle list leading because <laughs> to say she was sidelined, she was mobile on a little scooter that she was steering around the field as active and energetic as anybody, but she couldn't play, unfortunately. They wouldn't let her play with the scooter. Scooter ultimate that's, would be an interesting sport. That <laughs> That's a lesson for, you know, every player, every team deals with injuries at, at certain points throughout the season. and. I would say Kaler made the most of that opportunity to try and provide a source of entertainment and energy and positivity for her team, regardless of how challenging that was for her personally. Well, they had the great semifinal comeback win, knocking off that Central Florida team, Sonny Harris on Universe Point in the finals, Ohio State fever winning the title for the Midwest. Looking long again off the turnover. And Oregon's Rachel Hershey could not pull the trigger with the bid. Thought that was a great shot from Kaler. Again, something we'd expect her to do right after the turnover. Was a bit surprised that Hershey didn't pull the trigger and bid there. Here's White. One thing you like about everyone in the Stanford handling core, they all look very confident with the disc. Their motions, their fakes, Rempel through a tight space to gag. Oregon was Perhaps a layout away from taking half, and all of a sudden now it's Stanford looking to inch back within one. And the throw sails too high out of the hands of Sandino. So Oregon with a chance to march this down the field and break for half. Oh, almost a Callahan, and instead it's caught by Walrus. Sandino deflected the disc, but did not get enough of it. Another oh. perhaps overused ultimate oh, adage, catch your Ds, referring to the need to catch your blocks, lest they get macked into a receiver's hands, and that's a prime example of needing to do that. Sure. Now remember, Oregon will receive the opening pull the second half, so that only amplifies the importance of this score here from Stanford. If Oregon had gone up 8-5, then they would receive the first pull the second half, but finally the Stanford score to bring them back within one. So at this point in the tournament, this point in the game, I think it's important for Stanford to keep stacking their lines for the rest of this first half. You need to do everything you can to get this game back on serve or as close to on serve as possible and not be trying to dig out of a deficit right off the bat in the second half. Third score for Courtney Gegg, who was actually a triathlete before making the transition to ultimate. She was introduced to the game in large part by Nathan White, Monisha's older brother, who you mentioned on the U.S. national team. They were friends, and he exposed her to the sport of ultimate. Timeout on the field. White and the rest of the USA men's team, and actually the entire U.S. delegation participating in a final practice and scrimmage weekend up in Virginia. They'll be heading to the World Ultimate Guts Championships in mid-June. And it's coming up, just a few weeks away, heading to London. Evan, you have anything you want to visit while you're over there? I have so many things I want to visit. Never been to Europe before, but uh, I imagine I'll spend most of my time at the fields, okay. which is not a bad place to be. Right. 
especially when you have a collection of the world's greatest ultimate players in the same place. Yeah, really looking forward to heading to London for the World Championships. Certainly many of these players could leave their mark on in the international scene over the course of the next decade. You see Rachel Wong, uh, excuse me, Jenny Wong. Assistant coach along with Robin Davis and Steph Lim for Stanford. So it's 7-6, first half. Halftime comes when we reach eight. Something Oregon will try to achieve here on the offensive point. And a couple offensive players are coming over here for Stanford to stack this line and challenge the offense, Oregon offensive unit. Bartriff, Schaffner, Kaler, and Odie are all downfield. Schaffner comes for the opening under. Oh, and just out of the reach, off the fingertips of Alex Odie. Shayla Harris with a good holster there. And again, Hansen making it impossible for White to get open on the dump, but. Rempel to gag through the contact, count it. And the foul. And we're tied 7 all with a halftime point coming here in Raleigh. Just when we thought Stanford was going to be stuck on the sideline, they're able to get a great throw up the line. And this is where it all started, that inside shot from Schaffner. Just a bit too far. Harris trying to find her dump. Hansen shutting down Monisha White. And then Harris gets her mark to fall over. Wide open throw to Rempel. And Gegg sustains the contact from Kaler. How unusual is this? To be looking downfield, to not see it, you, you sort of commit to your dump, and then it opens up downfield again. I, some teams consider after you've turned to the dump, looking back downfield as a cardinal sin. Sure. So depending on what system you're in, that's extremely unorthodox. So a huge run for Stanford here to get back-to-back -back scores, both from Gegg, who has had an unreal first half. And she and Rempel and Harris and Monisha White, if not a few of the others, are all going to stay out there and keep this stacked line to attempt to break for the halftime lead. White with a pull. Rempel, Harris, White, Cruz, Sandino, and McGee on the defensive line. And Stanford's Shayla Harris swooping in. She's taken off. Rempel's shot for the half. There it is. Sophomore Shayla Harris winning every bit of that Jesse Schaffner matchup on that point taking away the disc on the first undercut and then taking Schaffner deep after the turnover. Looked like Hansen threw a pump fake to try and communicate with Schaffner. Not sure if that caused Schaffner to stop her cut. But then Harris took off and Rempel delivering a perfect throw for that break. And not the first time that Stanford has capitalized quickly off an Oregon turnover. Exactly, it's, they're beating Oregon at their own game, exactly. you might say. Shayla Harris hauls in the score in a nice little reset, Sandino to Rempel, great balance, tight spin on that forehand throw. So it looked like at one point, Oregon was set to take half 8-5. They had the disc on the doorstep, couldn't punch it in. Two Courtney Gegg goals later, we were tied, and then the D and the score to make it 8-7. Stanford leads at the break. We're now joined by the head coach of Stanford Superfly, Robin Davis. What a finish to the first half. Any particular message in a timeout that you would credit that turnaround to? Uh, 
Um, well, we've been focusing on our man defense all game and our all tournament. All tournament, we've been working on our defense, and I'd say that that turnaround is those superfly players playing tight D every second, never giving up. What do you think about your team's chances to just keep dictating in that person defense scheme in the second half? Um, nothing's going to be easy in the second half. This is going to be fought all the way to the end. So we're going to keep fighting, they're going to keep fighting, and it's going to be a, a battle the whole way. Did you know that Shayla Harris was going to have such confidence and effectiveness in that Jesse Schaffner matchup coming into this game? Yeah, we, we've been planning for that matchup. We've been planning for that matchup for weeks, months. How yeah. has she grown as an ultimate player? Because you told me before she hadn't played before coming to Stanford just a little over a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, she's a sophomore. She never played before. She Last year, she was an impact player in the finals, um, but really as a receiver. She's always been good at jumping. Now she's a complete player. She can play defense on best player in the game, and she uh, can throw and catch and score goals well, against Robin, anyone. Robin, you're seven points away from a date with Whitman tomorrow. We'll let you get back to your team. Good luck in the second half and have fun. Enjoy it out there. All right, thanks. That's Robin Davis in her 15th year at the helm of Stanford where she won a championship and a player trying to win another as a coach in 2016. The sun has emerged here in Raleigh, North Carolina and Stamford on a 3-0 run to close out the first half, 8-7. The three seed Stanford leading the top seeded Oregon team at the half and in the first half there was plenty of back and forth action. It was somewhat sloppy in the early going in and then both teams kind of caught fire using all varieties of offense, the deep game, the short game, and as usual defense fueling offense. Yeah, that first point was filled with turnovers. I think that's a little bit of jitters and nerves. And once the game is tied at three, Shayla Harris really starting to assert her authority on the field with that great breakthrough to Courtney Gegg. She would go on to have a bigger impact later in this half. But first, we're going to have a look at the Oregon Fugue offense working in flow. Kaler with this beautiful touch throw to the back corner where only Odie can chase it down. And Stanford, the D-line offense taking a page out of the Fugue book and running a fast break on the turnover to capitalize and convert. The final point here for the Oregon offense, this is Jesse Schaffner sliding to save possession. You don't see the baseball slide too often, Evan. And another deep shot here from the Oregon offense. Caldwell, Caldwell giving Oregon a seven to five lead. One of her many highlights that half. And then after having the disc on the goal line to go up eight five, the Oregon squad just could not close it out. And Harris figuring prominently in the Stanford comeback once again, finding Rempel who would continue to gag, sustaining the contact from Kaler to make the grab. And Harris with arguably the play of the half there, not only getting that first throw block, but then beating Schaffner deep. We were three throws from an 8-5 Oregon halftime lead, and then Stanford marched back to lead 8-7. That's how it happened. Stanford Superfly up by one at the break here in Raleigh, North Carolina. For the first time in Pittsburgh program history, Trent Dillon is the Callahan Award winner, the first Pittsburgh player to win the prestigious Player of the Year Award. Congratulations to Trent Dillon, your 2016 Callahan Award winner. I asked their head coach, Nick Kazmarek, earlier this week, what will it mean to you if Trent Dillon wins the Callahan? And he said, we'll focus on semifinals. And they have a semifinal coming up later today. Katie Weatherhead currently focused on her team's semifinal, and 
the Fugue trails by one. Uh, Katie, your thoughts on the first half? A, a disjointed start. You guys played fairly tough. Stanford closing a 3-0 run. What were your overall thoughts? Overall thoughts, uh, both teams are playing super hard. We're both running very hard. We've made a few mental errors that have let them uh, catch back up with a few breaks at the end there. But my team's ready to work hard in the second half, and it's a new half, new game. Any matchups you think you want to change defensively as you look at the Stanford offense? I think our defense is playing great. I wouldn't change a thing. What has this fifth-year senior class meant to this program? These fifth year senior class were actually freshmen when I was a fifth year, so I've watched them grow. I've been coaching them for five years now, played with all of them for a year, and they have so much passion and so much heart, and I'm, I couldn't be more proud of them. And what was your honest thought when you were a fifth year senior and those little freshmen were out running sprints at the end of practice without you? Without me, I don't know if they're doing anything without me, but I just looked at them and just saw great things in their future. And it was a huge part of why I stayed around and why I love this program so much. It's players like that and players like every single player on this team just work hard, put their heart out there every day, day in, day out. All right, Katie, good luck in great. the second half. Thank Thanks you so for much. joining us. All right. Oregon trails 8-7. Here's your scoring summary. Courtney Gegg has had a huge game, as has Shayla Harris. Only the one goal, but we know how important Harris has been. <laughs> She's been dominating the Jesse Schaffner matchup and looking over at the Oregon side, Schaffner showing up with a goal, Kaler with four assists, and we will be right back with second half action after this break. When the day began, we thought the umbrellas would be plentiful, but we thought they'd be defending the precipitation. To the contrary, the umbrellas are providing very nice shade here in Raleigh. Second half underway. Stanford pulling to Oregon. We're on serve after the Stanford three-zip rally to close out the half. And it's Ella Hansen with possession of the disc. And she connects with Jesse Schaffner underneath. Harris marking her again. And Schaffner shoots deep right away to Bartriff. In the end zone, it's knocked away. Strong defense from Gordon. Gordon with great size relative to her counterpart. Bartra's one of those receivers that you want to lead more into space, not necessarily hang a throw for. And I'm sure Schaffner was trying to lead her as far into the break side as possible, but not quite where she wanted that throw. Up the line, an incredible catch. Two Fugue players collide and impervious to the play in the end zone. It's Stanford's Natasha Field Marsham. But this might be coming back yes, on an we, injury before call. The throw. I'm okay. before, before the throw. Before the throw, it will go back. Oh, and it's a, a tough break for Stanford because the injury did not impact Stanford's score, but a scary collision with Kaler and Odie. As Rempel put it on the money to field Marsham, she was fired up. Right so this is here. Right when she caught it, basically. So. Since, you, since, your, since your injury was caused by each other, it was not caused by an opponent, you have to stop out. So. No. Sorry. Huh? No, but they hit each other. They did not hit an opponent. Okay. Yeah. That's good, right? Sorry. So both. Mike changed two also. Yeah. Right. Both yeah, you need Odie and Kaler coming out of the game. Stanford good. And still Oregon got the better end of that because it appears both Odie and Keller are okay. And Stanford isn't ahead 9-7 yet. Rempel's going to have the disc unmarked at midfield. Stanford does have a numbers advantage downfield. Harris, Gag, and Marshall. And shoots deep again. This one to Gag who comes down with it. Great catch from Gag, 10 yards away. Harris to the end zone. Courtney Gig. Her third score in this 4 0 run from Stanford to take their first two score lead of the game. We, we spoke with the Stanford coach earlier, and we heard her say that perhaps last year or in the final last year, Harris was more of a receiver, and now she's become more of a complete player who can defend and who can throw. 
We've seen her defense as well, and this is the second time she's broken the mark in the red zone to find Gag for an important goal. Great work by Harris. Nice grab by Gag there, just using her size over Schaffner as well. Really can't quantify what Gag has meant to this team, making incredible catches all around the field, playing spectacular defense. Can try to quantify it, I suppose, but that doesn't even do justice. Yeah, seven out of nine points ain't bad to start. So all of a sudden, Oregon on the ropes a little bit, Ian, with the 4-0 run from Superfly. Oregon is the type of team, though, that feeds off of energy and builds momentum quickly. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them respond with a small run of their own if they can establish some offensive chemistry here. Offsides on the pull, so this one coming back, and they'll do it again. Well, when the 50 year senior class of Schaffner, Odie, and Kaler were freshmen in the quarterfinals against Iowa, they trailed 14 13, game to 15. That year, 2012, they had not been to the semifinals as freshmen, obviously, and certainly felt like their backs were up against the wall. But in the same moment, they said afterwards, we thought we were winning the game. And a couple crazy points. Jesse Schaffner got injured on Universe. And a stoppage again. And so, I think they got Oregon. Or did they call Stanford? No, no, it's like coming out of a timeout. So you're timeout, you're just gonna have time to set up on defense afterwards. Okay? You have time to step on defense. 20 to set offense, 20. So you Oregon's gonna get the disc at midfield here. Set and you'll get 20 to set. After a second offsides like penalty for the defense. Stanford defense. 10 to set offense. It's a careless mistake Five, from Superfly. Four, three, two, Schaffner got one, hurt on that universe initiate. point in the quarterfinals. Later in the point, it was a marathon one. One of her teammates got hurt. She came back into the game, scored the game winner. And a violation there. They're not set yet. The player's tapping the disc back in or starting play before the defense was set. Everyone here set? Okay. Let's wait we saw Bartra clear in. out for Odie. I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the same play. McGee playing center field, and now she's going to close. Odie, Bartra. And the lefty shot to the end zone is beautiful. Odie hauls it in from Brunick. And that's an important score for Oregon to stabilize things. And we got, when we had the observer's microphones turned up a few moments ago, we got to hear some emotion from Odie, who was just employing her, her teammates to stay focused on their game, despite the changing score. And she's leading by example, trying to get every other throw and close the deficit for Fugue. A little kick spike there. Not afraid to show some emotion. Imploring confidence and energy among her teammates. Well, they've been in this spot before. Tight games, elimination scenarios. Alex Odie trying to improve to 5-0 and in national semifinals. And you thought LeBron's six consecutive NBA Finals bids was impressive. He's only competing against 29 teams. I'm sure, there are only 20, only 20 at Nationals, but right. there are 300 something around say, the country. Got hundreds of competitors to go up against in the entire women's division. Stanford starting with a vertical stack. White wanted to break the mark. Some junk here from Oregon. 
and a hand block on the white throw, but Rempel saves possession. Ahead to Gag. Looking for a reset, and a good around backhand swing continued. Rempel ahead, Field Marsham, the sophomore. Methodical possession so far for Superfly. The team name Superfly, created by Dominique Fontenet back in the mid 90s. Hansen got a piece of it and secures the D for Oregon. An ambitious shot there from White. That's always a really tough throw, throwing completely across the field. As Kaler's going to rip it deep. Gay getting back, and there was contact. Galvin and Gig discussing. It's a foul contest. Both players looking up at the. Uh, we look at this on the replay, and it. You want to send it back to him? Okay, okay, my ruling you to initiate contact with her. Okay. Foul upheld. But you're just here. And one. It's such a it is a foul. A challenging situation for the defender. For the other ones. Trying to close the separation and also deciding to go to the observer. She under she went to the observer knowing full well that the disc could end up in Oregon's hand on the doorstep. So Galvin takes timeout about five yards from the front of the end zone. And that was an interesting foul there because while there certainly was contact, that's undisputed, it's hard to say whether Galvin had a play on the disc or if she had misplayed it initially despite the contact. What do you think? The first time I saw the replay, let's, let's get another look at this here, I did think that perhaps she misread it. Both. It doesn't look like Gag is going out of her way to initiate contact there. I, I think Galvin just kind of incidentally trips over Gag. I think they were both trying to body for the same space. That's a, that's a difficult call. A, a hard to fault the observer for upholding it in yep. the, with the play taking place at full speed. Well, three years in a row on these broadcasts, four years now, we show that no physical contact is allowed graphic, <laughs> and it always makes me chuckle because anyone who's around Ultimate knows that this game can get very physical. And you know, when I talked to Katie Weatherhead before the game, asked her what her keys to the game are, well, it's going to be physical, and we like that. We're at our best when we're playing physical. So they don't shy away from the physical contact, even though technically in the rules it is forbidden. Sure. A lot of space here for the for Hansen, and I believe that's Kaler at the front of the stack. A lot of space for them both to work with as Galvin picks up the disc. Resets to Hansen. And the flick knocked away. Santino with the excellent defense in the end zone. That's a huge stand, especially if Stanford can march the full 70 yards of the field here. And a stoppage downfield. I believe White might have called a I'll fast count no or a foul uncontested. On a quick restart. But Rempel's throw errant in pursuit of Field Marsham. Oregon gives it right back like Rempel was the intended target of that Oregon throw. Nobody marking Caitlin Go, and she's going to bend this one. Gag is there. Stanford back up by two. We need a we need a Kirk Goldsberry shot chart or heat map because I think Courtney Gag has caught more goals in that half of that end zone than any other part of the field so far. Pretty nice throw from Caitlin Go. Certainly helped that she was unmarked as well. Little breakdown in the Oregon defense. 
and Hansen, again, Oregon with the disc in the red zone, knocking on the door, getting a little greedy with that inside shot, not able to get it past the defender and ultimately giving Stanford a chance to start working it back down the field. And that's got to be demoralizing. You have the disc on the goal line, the foul call upheld, you call timeout, and you cannot convert. What does that do to Oregon now? Something they've been fighting against all game. I, I think they need to perhaps take some of those lessons to heart and perhaps be a little stingier, a little more disciplined, especially in the red zone. Katie Weatherhead, Claire Sharman, Danielle Hirsch, the three Oregon coaches looking for answers on this critical offensive point. About 13 minutes away from the soft cap here in the second women's semifinal. The Whitman Sweets have already advanced, taking down Virginia earlier this afternoon. Schaffner. Bartruff. Got it. The Oregon offense did a really nice job keeping everyone isolated there. Bunch of cutters staying over to that far side, keeping the side stack tight and giving Schaffner and Walrus and ultimately Bartriff a lot of space to run onto and work in. And key grab there from Schaffner. Harris had been frustrating her earlier in the game, but Schaffner beats her to the space to save possession and ultimately go on to throw the point ending score here. I wouldn't say Schaffner's had a bad game by any stretch, mm -mm. but she hasn't dominated any points by herself, which is a tall task to ask of a player, but you typically see that from a player of her car car uh, caliber, and we've seen it throughout her career and this weekend. You know, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a function of fatigue or nerves or anything like that. I think this is more a credit to the Stanford defense that has thrown different looks and a very obviously calculated and well-scouted matchup at her. And that's perhaps forcing her slightly outside of her comfort zone and preventing her from dominating in the way she has in the past. The pull just barely landing inbounds on the sideline. Tough spot for Monisha White to begin this possession. And it leads to a turnover. Not on the same page with a receiver there. And Oregon's off to the races with Walrus shooting deep. That throw sailing much higher than she'd like. Galvin read it well. Oregon has tied it up 10-10 on the quick counterattack following Stanford's first throw giveaway. So we had two Stanford defenders closing here. And that's unfortunate. That's Veronica Cruz, who just kind of eats it as she's trying to gain position and body out. Well, we were tied 5-5. We're tied 10-10. I suppose it's possible to be tied 15 all, but it's unlikely considering we're 10 minutes away from the soft cap. And you see, you see Walrus clapping as soon as she released that. She was not happy with how much that throw hung, but ultimately Galvin reading the disc better than anyone else on the field. So Evan, you mentioned that this game is tied at 10-10. We are also 10 minutes from the soft cap. If the soft cap horn does go off, we will add two points to the highest score and play to that score. So we could potentially be playing to 16 or 17. We'll see how quickly these next few points go. They would have to go pretty fast to yeah. play to 17. <laughs> Rempel needs help, gets it to Harris. Which team looks fresher to you right now? I 
I think Oregon has been using more depth. I haven't seen the likes of Shayla Harris, Courtney Gegg, White, or Rempel taking many points off this half. I do think Oregon has a bit more depth in this situation. But I haven't seen fatigue be a factor just yet for the Stanford Superfly. White just across midfield, bluffs a hammer, flicks it to Rempel. Middle of the field, Sandino swings it, Cruz ahead for Gegg. Into the red zone, super fly. And this is where you gotta treat the disc like gold. A nice fake there from Rempel. Caitlin go wide open, really freezing the defense with that pump fake. So good patience here from the Stanford offense. Not forcing anything that, any shots they don't need to take. Just perfectly content to dump to their primary handlers and take the dishes while they're there. And again, you saw that pump fake from Rempel freeze Kaler. She had to respect the possibility of the quick pop out to Gag, and that opened up the throwing lane to go. Another big game for Rempel. Caitlin Go has been involved since the start as well. So it's 11-10 Stanford. Seven and a half minutes away from the soft cap. Yeah, and Evan, conversely, when we were describing the soft cap a few, a few minutes ago, it's seeming more and more likely that we aren't going to reach that ultimate point total. So we could be playing a, a shorter game to 13 or 14, depending on how things shake out these next few points. We know Oregon can strike fast. Definitely, and we've we've seen it a few times when Schaffner and Odie and Walrus and Kaler have gotten into a rhythm and the Oregon offense coming out in a split stack here. Deep shot from Kaler. Oh, and it was misread on the doorstep by Stanford. And Shayla Harris is on the spot once again. Bartriff just trying to throw the quick dish for a goal. But Sharis, Shayla Harris sneaking up behind Schaffner and knocking the disc away before she can reel it in. Bartriff rushed it just a little bit, didn't she? Definitely could have taken another second before taking that look to the end zone. So on the counter attack. To Harris to get it off the sideline. Gordon. Active bouncing mark from Brunick there. White. McGee. Great throw there to Dunham and another great throw. Harris now about 15 yards from the end zone. Needs help. Schaffner shutting down Dunham on the dump. And they White still the find White and into the end zone. Stanford takes a two score lead as Anne Marie Gordon punctuates the point with another goal. So let's go back to the initial opportunity. This has been the story of the game. Oregon on the goal line with the chance to tie the game, put the game, you know, increase their margin, and they just haven't been able to convert in those situations, thanks to the great hustle there by Shayla Harris. And then they just confidently knife some inside out throws to space up the field. Harris finding White, and then White into the end zone for Gordon. And Stanford now up 12-10 after Oregon was on the doorstep. Could have tied the game at 11. These two teams last met before today at the Northwest Challenge. 
Oregon won that game 12 to 9. At the moment, Fugue trailing 12 10. About four minutes away from the soft cap now. Fugue on offense. Another split stack here from the Fugue offense. And Gag shuts down the first cut to Kaler. It's Odie, marked by McGee. Great person defense here from Superfly. Schaffner over to Kaler. Schaffner clears. And no one came back to the handler space fast enough. Another D from McGee. Kaler, we know she's got that high release flick throw in her book, but it's just too sharp an angle to try and reach Odie. And Stanford's able to get the block. Gag up to Gordon on the fourth side. It's Dunham. Beautiful reset there on the high release. Swings to Harris. Stanford can taste it. Harris to the end zone. It's Gordon again. And that's been the difference in this game, Evan. You look at how both teams have executed, or been, another way to put it, been patient in the red zone. Stanford has converted more frequently than or Oregon has even if it's required holstering or not taking the first look that might be available. Anne Marie Gordon, again, she discovered the sport while living in the Dominican Republic. Came to Stanford, is in grad school, and grabs another goal, so a timeout on the field called by Oregon. One last gasp for this 50 year senior class. As Gordon trying to lead Stanford back to the title game for the second year in a row. Done. This is your dirt row. So be happy to be on it. This well, is the road when they we were built. freshmen. They're Here back they up against the wall in the quarterfinals. They've had several moments like this, although they've also had their fair share of blowout wins too because they've been such a dominant program. Jesse Schaffner was saying the other day, they love being tested. That's what fuels them. Look at that. You can sense. They know that this is an urgent situation. Great shot by our crew. Going to be do or die every point from here on out for the Oregon offense. We get a, we took a, a quick look at the Stanford line there. Gag and Harris have been on the field almost every point here for Superfly in the second half. I, I did see Gag ta take at least one point off. The Stanford lineup, Monisha White, Michelle McGee, Shayla Harris, Natasha Field Marsham. And Hallie Dunham unleashes the pull. And it is a beauty. Centers to Hansen. And a junk look here from, it looked like a sagging poach. Laser beam flick caught by Kaler. To the end zone, caught for the score. Morgan Caldwell has made one great catch after another. And that gets Oregon back within two. Odie with the deep shot to Kaler. And you know, I wonder if Kaler intended for that to go to Caldwell or if she was looking at Walrus a bit closer. White hat position. Yeah, and it Caldwell like. just beats her to the spot. 
Caldwell, you know, this great senior fifth year senior class is moving on, but that's a bright spot to look at for the future. Morgan Caldwell with her third goal, not to mention the great contribution she's made on the defensive side of the disc today. And now Fugue in a position where they need to break. Soft cap went off during that last point, so it's a game to 15. Stanford needs two to advance to the title game. On offense here. We'd set the lineup for you, but you know who's out there because Stanford hasn't been changing it. The familiar names, Field Marsham, downfield with Gegg, Rempel and White, the two handlers. Caitlin go back on the field. Allie Dunham at the front of the stack. Marked by Schaffner. Somehow Field Marsham got wide open. White airs it out. Nope. So Oregon has life. I, I, I could understand that maybe her receiver had a step. That was early in the stall count. If you're not sure that you're gonna connect on that and the circumstances are as pressure filled as they are, I don't know if I necessarily like that deep shot. Oh, Bartriff got leapt upon by Field Marsham. Thank goodness they're both all right. That's ultimate right there. Bartriff understands that ultimate is there's more contact than you might anticipate in this sport. The heat of a championship moment. They're able to realize the humor in what happened, especially with both of them being all right. And Oregon will have the disc. Caldwell. Very active mark from Veronica Cruz, throwing it forward, and Rempel smacks it to the ground. Smart play from Cruz. Understanding that Caldwell might not be the most experienced thrower. You can call a fast count, but it's still going to be a turn. Okay, fast count is called, it is, but it's still a turn. Okay, it's gonna be here. All right, well, everyone set? So Caldwell shifting around, taking away all of the dump throw options. Rempel's throw stolen by Hansen. Schaffner to the end zone. Odie. Fugue within one. And this is the fugue we've expected. Capitalizing quickly on turnovers. Chipping away at this lead now. Surprised that Rempel's around throw wasn't more on target. It's what happens with kind of high release backhands. It's hard to put as much zip or precision on them. And Odie beats Rempel to the cone. Timeout called by Stanford. Gives Oregon a chance to rest up. Stanford trying to shift the momentum because Oregon's scored the last two. And this second semifinal headed down to the wire. It's a game to 15. There is no hard cap in the semis or the finals. Change that began last year. A change that I was thrilled about. Robin Davis trying to stabilize her team. You have been in the huddle in many of these moments in elimination games, in nationals. What's typically said? You know, it's very little, there's very little discussion of strategic specifics. 
It's all a matter of making sure that your mental focus is in the right place. It, it sounds cliche, but focusing on the things that you can control, you know, hey, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna do my job setting the mark. Hey, I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna worry about the weather or what the other matchup is, is dictating or doing. I'm just gonna focus on the things I can control and the commentary from the leadership, if they're smart, is going to keep things concise and simple and digestible for their teams. Stanford will receive up by one. Ella Hansen, another promising sophomore on the pull. A lot of hang time on this one. White lets it drop. Rempel marked by Odie. Almost a D underneath from Bartriff, but Harris hauled it in. Breaking the mark to Gag. Rempel directing traffic. Let's it go. Stanford scores. Beautiful shot to Gordon. And Jesse Schaffner knew that throw was going to go up just before Rempel released it. And you'll see her come into the frame here on the replay, closing as quickly as she could. But that was a perfect throw for Rempel in a space where only Gordon could get to it. As we see the dishy here to Rempel directing traffic. You see Schaffner peeling off there. Can't quite make up the ground. And Stanford now one goal away from their second appearance in as many years in the title game. Stanford has won seven championships in women's ultimate, but never since 2007. Now, if you're Stanford here, do you think about giving some of your top players a point off? Or do you just keep on chugging with what's got you here? I understand both sides of that coin. I personally would probably give a few, a few players a point off, but it looks like the Stanford coaching staff is electing to keep Harris, White, Gag, Rempel, and the rest of the crew out there. McGee, Gordon out there as well with Field Marsham. 14-12. Oregon pushed to the brink. Up the line for Kaler. You know, Stanford's had some really good aggressive marks in this game. They've been active. Schaffner to the end zone for Odie. And on the second effort, Alex Odie hauls it in. Oregon needs to break Stanford twice in a row to win. I think the only circumstance in which Schaffner doesn't throw that is if perhaps Gag is on Odie. I'm not sure that stops her. <laughs> she does have quite the trigger finger. As we see that great inside shot from Hansen really making the score possible. The hockey assist, if you will, the pass before the true assist. And we can see Odie is relatively exhausted, but she's gonna need to find the lungs and the legs for two more breaks. A really nice timing on the cut too from Odie. Setting it up right as Schaffner was making the catch and looking upfield. That little S cut on the goal line to the open space. Absolutely. So Oregon on this critical point. You can see the seven on Galvin with Walrus, Kaler, Schaffner. Can you hear, if you're hearing some of the audio from the crowd, the Oregon men here cheering their classmates on. Stanford looking to get back to the title game and end Oregon's run of semifinal victories. Onisha White has been so super solid 
Really well played second half from both sides after some sloppy moments in the first. Whitman awaits the winner. More of the same on this offensive point for Superfly. Go. Nice grab. Veronica Cruz, one of the captains. It's go. To the end zone. And Stanford has done it. A layout grab from the captain, Veronica Cruz, to end Oregon's season in stunning fashion here in the semifinals. Stanford, 15, Oregon, 13. The story of the game, Evan, Stanford's ability to capitalize on opportunities in the red zone. That might have been the riskiest shot we've seen from them in the red zone all game but a fantastic catch in Oregon. The favorite heading into the tournament will not be playing in the national title game. Stanford will have a chance to win their first title since 2007. When Caitlin Go throws this, what do you think her head coach was thinking in that exact moment? I really <laughs> wish you were squaring up with your dump. A bold play. Superfly. And credit to Bartriff. She made up incredible ground in those last few seconds there and got about as close as you could without making the block. So a great tradition in ultimate at the college, club, and international levels, teams like to bring it together for what's called a spirit circle and discuss the elements of sportsmanship that went well or could be improved looking back on the game. The season comes to an end for one team. The other is in the finals. And they're arm in arm. The, co the contrasting emotions, you can see it on the faces of these players. Jesse Schaffner certainly feeling the pain. Her college career has come to an end. A great one. It was, but Stanford has knocked off Oregon. It'll be Superfly in the Suites tomorrow. We'll be back with more from Raleigh. The 2016 USA Ultimate College Championships are presented by Discraft Ultrastar, the official disc of USA Ultimate. Discraft Ultrastar, now available at over 1,900 U.S. retail locations, including all Dick Sporting Goods and Hibbit stores. Buy five Ultimate, apparel made specifically for Ultimate players by Ultimate players. Visit fiveultimate.com for everything from Discraft Ultra Stars to jerseys, shorts, and custom team uniforms. And by USA Ultimate, the national governing body for the sport of Ultimate in the United States. For more information or to find out where to play in your area, visit usaultimate.org. Discraft play of the game, the clincher. Veronica Cruz lays out in the end zone past Olivia Bartriff, who immediately knew what had happened. Her team had been eliminated from championship contention, and Veronica Cruz with her first and only score. What an important goal that was, and an incredible highlight and moment for the sport here in Raleigh and Stanford heading back to the title game for their second year in a row, a chance to win their first championship since 2007. The final, Stanford 15, Oregon 13, so the three seed and the five seed going head to head on championship day Monday here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Robin Davis joining us down on the field. Congratulations on this great win. Let's be honest. 
when Caitlin Go fired that inside flick and the disc was in the air. What's going through your mind? Oh, oh Caitlin, please, Veronica, <laughs> save your teammate. <laughs> yeah, Veronica made a crazy catch to save that. That was awesome. Unbelievable game for you guys. How did you pull it off? Uh, more of the same, more defense, 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 defense. Um, yeah, everyone was working hard, Every, all seven on the field, all the players on the sideline helping their teammates, telling them when the disc was up, so it was a big team effort. You, you mentioned at halftime that you had the Schaffner matchup well yeah. scouted. Yeah. I'm sure you've got a number of the matchups well scouted for Whitman. What are you thinking about defensively as you head into that game? Well, we're not going to change anything that's not broken. We've been winning games all weekend with our man defense, so I think we'll keep on that route. Robin, the two teams coming together for the Spirit Circle at the end. Obviously, you guys know each other really, really well. You had a lot of battles and a lot of conflicting emotions. What was that moment like down on the field with the two teams oh, right after the game? You know, that one is really all about the players together. The coaches are not even involved in that circle. So um, coaches stood by and took hands and hugged and congratulated each other on our team's good games, but the players were all in that together. Robin, you've been a player in this situation, needing to go to sleep and wake up the next morning and play the national championship. What's the message to some of the younger players on your team who haven't gone through this before? Uh, it's just another game. I don't think they'll have any trouble sleeping. I think they're tired. <laughs> but, but is it just another game? We know it's not. Oh, yeah, but no, it's, you got to treat it like another game. Sure, yeah. we hear you. Congratulations yeah. on the win, Robin. Yeah. Go enjoy it. Yeah. Thanks so much. Hi, hi to my boys. Bye. Robin Davis, the head coach of Stanford Superfly in the five ultimate spirited player of the game will be number 23, Courtney Gay, who was just all over the field doing everything for her team. Really tough matchup. Her size presents a serious challenge for everyone. You know, she was involved in some physical collisions, didn't take it personally, maintained a high level of sportsmanship throughout the game, led her team on the field. Incredible endurance, too. I'm sure some of that triathlete background helped her persevere through the Raleigh heat. Courtney Gig, our five ultimate spirited player of the game, and She's the only one with a headset, but she's got some company down on the field. Ann Rempel and Shayla Harris alongside. Courtney, oh. what did this win mean to you here today? Yeah, I think for Superfly, we are just so pumped going into finals. Um, it was a hard fought battle on both sides. Oregon is so incredible. Um, their handler movement is fast and quick, and um, they really put us to the test. They gave it their all. Um, and at Superfly coming into the finals, we are pumped coming off this win. What do you think about Whitman as you look at those matchups that they've got for you tomorrow? Yeah, Whitman is also an incredible team um, in building up to the finals. Uh, Superfly, we've been practicing kind of specific things for the defense. Um, and we are confident that we have a lot of the tools that we can utilize tomorrow to really bring a good game. Courtney, what about the performances of the gals to your right and to your left? Oh, man, Dozer, who's our 51, uh, has just come out and killed it this season. Um, up in the air, she's starting to throw the disc. Um, it's just an absolute privilege to be on the field with her. Annie is one of my best friends at Stanford. Um, comes in, brings the calmness to Superfly. Uh, just the composure is really, really key to our success on offense from Annie. Courtney, I barely saw you take a point off the entire second half. All of those track workouts, everything you've been doing so far this season, starting to pay off at the right time? Yeah, it's all coming together. <laughs> well, you were in this position last year, going to sleep on Sunday night for a national championship game, and you fell short. What will you tell your teammates that haven't been in this position before? Uh, yeah, I think we just have to bring the confidence today. We were pumped up to play, and we were confident with our skills. Um, so I think going in tomorrow, that's going to be key for us, confident that we are the team to beat. Courtney, last thing. In the end of the game, the two teams come together for the spirit circle with the conflicting emotions, a powerful scene. What was that like to be arm in arm with your opponent that you just barely beaten? Yeah, I mean, it's a absolute privilege to stand in the circle with Oregon. Um, they have got incredible players, and something that's so cool about Ultimate is when people come together after such a hard-fought game, and the camaraderie is there, and everyone is just there because we love the sport. 
So it was a really good atmosphere in the circle. Congratulations, ladies get some rest. You're playing for a national championship tomorrow. Thank you so much. Courtney Gigg, Annie Rempel, and Shayla Harris. Four has been whittled down to two, Ian. Whitman and Stanford are gonna face off tomorrow morning. The Sweets, the little sister, if you will, in the Northwest Division, Northwest Region, getting the best of everyone else. And Stanford, the established program, Superfly will find themselves in the title game for the second year in a row, trying to win their first title since 2007, Evan. That'll be at noon tomorrow here on the East Coast. The Sweets and Superfly. For Ian Toner, I'm Evan Leffler saying so long from the WRAL Soccer Park here in Raleigh. The final score, Stanford 15 to 13 over Oregon. It was a classic. To watch this entire game on replay, you can log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. We thank you so much for being with us. Men's semifinal action. Just about an hour away. This has been a presentation of ESPN. So long, everybody.